Hi, well welcome to our viewer question of the week and our very very first viewer question is I'm going to skip that because it might not be classed as our first viewer question Well, welcome back to Salty Lass and welcome to one of our viewer questions Now, in this particular case, our viewer question is to do with radios and specifically to do with radio licences but now, because this is a salty lass answer, do not be surprised that we will add in other things to do with radios, other information, but also just um, other asides that we just think is relevant or just leads off the main question. So it is a salty lass answer. So let's be honest, anything can happen, but hopefully, we will actually answer the question. we chose or at least I chose to talk about radios is because I have a little project to do and that is um, to remount our AIS aerial onto a new bracket now what I've done is I've bought myself a, new, uh, a, cho a plastic chopping board and it's only because the wood has just got damaged it's just sort of like uh, starting to look the worst for wear so I'm going to replace it but I've got a plastic chopping board and that's what I'm going to use. Now, on Salty Lass, we would never use plastic to actually chop up with. Mainly because once you've got a groove on here, bacteria can come into that groove and live in the groove. Whereas wood is actually an antiseptic. So yes, still you can cut the wood and the bacteria will grow but because of the properties of the wood it will actually kill the bacteria so that's one of the reasons that butchers will use a wooden chopping board block and it's also the reason that we on Salty Lass use wood for our chopping boards but in this case I'm going to be using this plastic chopping board as a mounting bracket so as far as I'm concerned that's a-okay I've got to just um, I'm just removing the feet uh, I've uh, cut off most of the foot but I just want to get rid of all this uh, glue residue on the um, chopping board so one of the things that we use quite often is WD-40 it might not be a very good uh, lubricant but I can tell you now it does really help remove uh, certain substances <laughs> case vinegar was my friend so um, it just depends on what type of glue they're using but these household products are the ones that we use here on Salty Lass <laughs> to be said when it comes to straight cutting Beverly is your queen not me <laughs> oh it's a salty lass project that's for certain <sighs> well that's the uh, holes all done and uh, now it's just a case of uh, once more outside but um, from my experience of putting bringing the bracket down these power tools are absolutely so useful 
and I'm so glad that we do have a video that says power tools are a girl's best friend because without them there's no way, even though this is a very simple job, there's just no way I could do it. Let's start off with something. Let's remove a controversy. Last year, somebody got a new sailing jacket and people said, where's Bevy's new sailing jacket? Yay! I got this year's. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, it's exactly the same one she had, so we're gonna have to label them up. Um, but at least we look like crew. We do. Hey! <laughs> um, but let's get to the actual question, which is to do with radio licenses. Well, do we have to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bevy, tell us all about radio licences. We're going right. to have to... Well, basically, there are two types of licence. There is one for the boat and one for the people. Uh, the one for the boat is free of charge. You simply go through the bureaucracy, fill it in, and they send you a piece of paper which you put somewhere in a locker and hopefully it doesn't go mouldy. The other one is individual radio licences, and for that you have to sit an exam. The course costs money and so does the final exam, but once you have it, you've got that radio licence for life. And the advantage of it, in my opinion, is it gives you the confidence to talk to other boats. You know what phrasing to use, you know the right words to use. You also hopefully know how to use your radio properly. Um, it also emphasises a couple of the legal aspects and things that you've got to know. Uh, like, for instance, there has to be somebody on a boat, in theory, with a radio licence to use the radio. Now, I've never heard of anyone being prosecuted for not having the licence, but that's the way it works. If one person on the boat has a license, everybody on the boat can use the radio because, in theory, there's one person monitoring it who knows what's going on. On the other hand, if it's an emergency, the rules go out the window. If it's an emergency, anyone can use the radio. And so we think that it's probably worth training everyone, including, say, like, if you've got like a 10 year old on the boat, just at least either tell them how to use the radio or make sure everybody in the boat sees this. We have it on the inside of a logbook. And what it is, it's a sticker which has the exact radio procedure for emergencies on it. You just literally follow the words that's on that. And if you're having an emergency, it should be good enough to get things done. Now, these stickers uh, should be near your radio. Now, for convenience, Beverly and I have put our stickers inside our logbook. Mm. Because when we're out sailing, we always have our logbook on top of the chart table. Yeah, because we're always filling it in. Uh, and it's just an easy thing to um, have there at the front of the logbook. Mm -hmm. Now, you can buy these stickers uh, from um, lots and lots of different chandlers. Do you know, I don't think we've ever bought one. I think we've just been given them. You it, go to the RNLI and say, do you have one to put in the front of the book? And I think that's where we got ours. We did get ours from the RNLI. <laughs> However, you can buy them and there's a link to Tog Navigation below um, if you do want to buy yeah, one. Yeah, they're not very expensive. They're, they're literally like about a pound or two. Yeah, but um, it is very important that everybody on the boat... Now, when I was a brownie leader, um, I used to teach uh, the brownies, which are eight-year-olds above. Brownies did marine radio navigation? No, they didn't do brownie radio navigation, but they did do emergency procedures for if there was an emergency at home. Now, Like not... the time you got locked in your own bathroom? Yeah. <laughs> it's, I... a long, it's a long story, but she was rescued by a two-year-old. <laughs> yeah, I was rescued by a two-year-old. But the thing is, it's the fact that even children uh, have got enough nous 
to be able to read some numbers. So as long as they know where the numbers for the latitude and the longitude are, then they can read that information. And they can also read things like your MMSI number and things like that. So I think, I think you're being a bit hopeful there. I mean, kids over about the age of about 13 know about coordinate grids because you learn them in school. But No, but you just have to tell them that this is the numbers that you're reading. They don't have to know. I think you're being hopeful there. OK, I'm being hopeful. I think but... you're being hopeful. So what is this large thing you're holding? Because it looks rather unnerving. Oh! <laughs> is it a three and a half inch shell? Is it going to take a boat out? No, no, no. It's just one of our... Uh, spares that we have on board and this particular one is our emergency antenna so that if um, we have an issue we have got an emergency antenna. In a way we've got another one though because we do have the AIS aerial. The frequencies aren't exactly the same but they're so close that you can use it. Yes so we're quite lucky in the fact that we've got the emergency antenna, we've got uh, an antenna up here. One, one thing I don't know about our AIS and maybe somebody can answer it and put it in the comments is AIS tends to work on a very low power, like 2 or 5 watts, whereas the main radio works on 25. If we put 25 watts through that aerial, would it go boom? I don't know. But right. the, the, the main radio does have a low power setting, so you could all switch on to that, but I don't know if that would survive 25, not what blast going through it. I just don't know. Yeah, because when you're doing an emergency, you want it to be on the full Actually, power. Yes, that's a good point. When you hit the emergency button, the radio automatically goes to full power. It does, whereas when you're doing other uh, frequencies, uh, they don't usually transmit yeah, like, at full instance, power. One of the things that came up in the radio course that I wasn't aware of, but channel 15 is a low power channel. You go to 15 and your radio often switches to low power. Yeah. Because it's meant to be used on board a large vessel like a tanker so the bridge crew can speak to the, the, the foredeck crew. Um, some of these big tankers are like, you know, tenth of a mile long sort of thing. Um, so the, the, the radio switches to low power. It also means that when you're out there, using 15 as a handy channel for chatting with other people is not actually a bad idea. Uh, it's especially when you just want to have a little conversation and you do not for whatever reason use 16 other than for just emergency so communication laughing. no we're filming we're filming <laughs> yeah yeah don't worry about it <laughs> we're talking about vhf radio <laughs> I'll watch it when it's complete now. Thursday with a bit of luck. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, one other advantage to channel 15 is it's one down from channel 16. So if you're on an up-down radio like this where you've got to um, quite literally press an up and down button to cycle through the channels, to have only one button to go down to get a, a, a reasonably private channel to chat on to another local boater is not actually bad. Uh, certainly, it's a lot better than when they say, go to channel 67, the small boat channel, and you think to yourself, do you know how many button pushes that is? <laughs> <laughs> All right. When you do your course, the main things that I think that everybody on the boat should know is the difference between a security, a pan pan, and a mayday. Yes. Because... They are different and they are used for very, very different reasons. Yes, two are emergencies and one is information. Yeah, like for instance, um, a security that we heard was when a tree had fallen in the Mersey and uh, it was floating merrily down the Mersey. So that was uh, told as a security. We've also heard security information to say that important voyage is uh, not working, the lights are out in them. Uh, and the other one was when um, uh, we were in the Clyde and uh, an area was being bombed. <laughs> yeah, the military were bombing the sea. <laughs> they were very good at it. They hit it every time. <laughs> they certainly <laughs> did. But they had to tell you the coordinates because... Please don't be here. We don't want to hit you with a <laughs> £1,000 exploding what's it. But it's not only that, it's just the fact that it would have sort of like, uh, all of a sudden you've got this strange it wave. Have, it would have ruined your day. <laughs> you have this strange wave coming at you. So that was a security. I'll take the wave as the explosives I don't want. <laughs> well, there is, those, those are types of security information. Pan Pan's an emergency, but nobody's going to die. Yeah, so Beverly and I have declared a couple of pan pans. No, I think we declared one actually. We declared one, but we also had the. Um, it could have been a, a pan pan when we got towed into Houth. 
Yeah, but it wasn't. I just I just um, shouted at um, the marina and asked, What's, is there any way we can get a tow back? And I came the blue and orange. Yes, that's true. I mean, I wasn't uh, expecting a lifeboat tow. I was just wondering, was there like a, a chug chug that could come and tow us back? Yeah. Um, but when you declare a pan pan, the boat uh, had issues in our case because water was coming on board. Yeah. But Beverly and I were fine. Uh -huh. um, Whereas May Mayday is the boat sinking or somebody on board has a life-threatening condition and we need assistance really, really quickly. We, like right now or yesterday would be good. Yeah. yeah. So um, knowing the difference between those three is very, very important. Mm -hmm. <sighs> One thing I would say, though, is when you do do your radio course, um, do read your book every now and then. Uh, because things like, because uh, we don't use them very often, DSC uh, uh, calls. Okay, let, let, me just, let me just redo that. One thing about the course is knowledge is slippery and when you don't use it, you lose it. So although we know about DSC and we know how to work it and things like that, well, I think we've lost the finer points of it because to be honest, we don't send DSC calls to anyone. And in case you're wondering what it is, it's like text messages for VHF radio. But it's covered in the course we've done it we know what it is it's in the book we could reread the book and we could pick it up again if we had to uh, probably wouldn't be a bad idea if we had a buddy boat to spend some time sending dsc messages between us just to get back into the way of it but you know use it or lose it that's the way it goes isn't it it certainly is so that was hopefully our answer to the question <laughs> and we didn't stray too badly <laughs> hopefully not <laughs> But that's it for now, and we'll see you in the next episode, whatever that might be.